This is a PowerWorks podcast short with Glenn Power and me, James Pikeway. Wonderful article that just really caught my attention with this gentleman who worked at Renault for a while and has set up his own little car company in France. They're selling something called the Gazelle. And it is a nuts and bolts electric vehicle. Like this thing is, you know, he was talking about putting the chassis together. It's 10 parts. It's like a Lego piece. And it's a lot of composite, a lot of fiberglass. It's very light. You can, the, the entire factory to build these things, he's also, not only has he got these cars that are very economical, not, not, although they're still fairly expensive to, to get, possibly because of the batteries, given that they're, they are so rudimentary. But the whole factory to build them, a couple of shipping containers. It's all you need because instead of a typical car that has a chassis which is 100 parts or so, this one's 10. So the whole car is based on this idea, like it's going to go 100 kilometers an hour, that's it. It's got your average charge distance that it can go. It's not fancy, but it looks okay. And you can, you know, the factory to build these things, shipping containers, and you could put it pretty much anywhere. You could have, you know, 20 of these set up around a country and you got basic mode of transportation for folks. And so I, I thought it was kind of neat. It's a good, it's, I mean, it's a great little idea and it's kind of the only way you can do it in Europe to get anywhere near the price point that you'll get from the Chinese offerings. Yeah. Because of the, because of the, you know, corporation taxes and, and, and general different standards of how to manufacture it, it, it's kind of the only way to do it and when you put it in and I, I've read through it I think it genuinely comes from a place of wanting to do something the right way yeah and and solve a problem because you know we said at the start fuel prices are too high everyone's going to buy an electric car oh hang on a minute no the Knox are too expensive yeah you know, it's just forty thousand dollars for a model three yeah well this is a the, nice as, one as they're, as they're building this it's low tech and it's very efficient. So, I mean, they're saying, they're saying that this, this gazelle, which is made from composite materials in micro factories, uh, that they get about, they consume almost half as much as its competitors. And it, they want to launch this as a, a new industrial model. So it's, you know, potential to, to be, they're saying, look, this is going to be the Tesla buster. It's a, yeah, I mean, look, there's potential for it. I, th- I think it just, it, make, it makes me look at it and think, well, PSA or VW Group are going to buy that up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, if VW think that that's going to hurt ID3 sales, well, all right, then we'll buy it. And then, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you know, I, th- that might be a cynical view, but I, I think there's so much money being put into EV development and getting them out there on the road as soon as they can to keep up with Mr. Musk and friends that, you know, there's too much in it. I mean, this thing well, I, I weighs a, less than a thousand kilos. It's yeah. like 900 kilograms. And for somebody looking for personal transport, this, this is, is, this is getting good. 180 kilometers. It can go out of charge. It, it recharges in four hours with a standard house socket. Yeah. So suddenly all you're checking all the boxes. Wait, I don't need supercharging. Yeah. I don't need this. I can just get to work and plug it in. And it, it doesn't exceed 100 kilometers an hour when it's driving. That's as fast as it's going to go. Look, I think something like this, we've, we've talked about it a couple of times in this episode. You know, if, if, you have, if you have electricity storage capabilities that you could fit in the boot of this car, that you could charge the vehicle battery and have a storage, you know, unit in the back that you can easily lift in as an individual. If you could charge that up, just like you know the wireless charger you have for your phone, yeah. Which, you know you can. I can. I've got one that will charge this phone from flat to full twice. Nice. It doesn't quite do two ice now because it's old and <laughs> yeah. I dropped it and it's rubbish. <laughs> but it'll charge my phone at least once. Yeah. So if you can charge the car and the storage unit, yeah. you don't even need to plug in anywhere when you park. Can you, you imagine? Just plug the car into yeah. what it's already inside the car. Yeah. You're effectively carrying a second battery around that charges the actual battery. Yeah. You get home and I mean, if, if it's a, a car that weighs nine hundred kilos, put another fifty kilo of battery storage in. <laughs> yeah, it's not the end of the world. You can lift that yourself yeah. reasonably easily. Yeah, I think it's it's it's, it's going to be interesting. It's the way to go. It, and it, they don't look bad. I mean, they have no. Some it doesn't look it. bad. It's, I mean, it's it's not. 
it's not yeah. the most desirable looking thing, but it's got four doors on it, so yeah. there's space. Yeah. Yeah. But people, did, for, this is a. I don't ever think somebody's going to look at this and think I need a family car and buy it. Yeah. But it's again, you know, it starts something. Yeah. You know, the 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 idea is there, and if somebody goes and puts money into it, and they say, okay, well. First thing they'll do is they'll make an SUV version of it. Exactly. They'll weigh like five tons and yeah. be all singing, all dancing. But no, seriously, I think it's it's it answers a question and it solves a problem of making things like this affordable. And I just think that if the power storage ca- capabilities were to be utilised, the, the the improvements we've made in that for me is where you solve a lot of problems. If you have the ability to plug your own car into effectively itself rather than have to find a charging station, yeah. you know, you could you don't need to stop at a services on the motorway and pay five pounds for a sausage roll. You can just stop at a picnic site having taken your own <laughs> exactly. food and plug it into itself. Yeah. You know, that that to me, you double your range with a fifty kilo box in the back. Yeah. And I think that's the way to go. Well, and the other side is I was I was thinking if you know you're in some big cities or even some small cities in Canada, depending on where you are, a lot of cars because of the cold have block heaters. And if you're in many parking places, you don't pay to plug in your block heater. You just plug it in and it's yeah. got like a socket at the parking spot. Well, if this thing plugs into a regular socket, yeah, yeah. I just plug in. I'm, I'm, you know, I've driven yeah. down, I'm in the parking spot and uh, okay, I'm going to plug in and okay, maybe they charge you a little bit more to park there because you're going to, use some power but it's not going to be out of the question yeah wow. definitely if you can run it off the natural imagine normal electricity supply of the grid i'd like to see one i'd like to see one here and just see you know especially if it's just driving around dubai i'd like to see what it's like <laughs>